I want to talk about the Nigel Sylvester, the Nigel Blood Clark Sylvester, Jordan Fours. Have you motherfuckers seen this? First look at the Nigel Sylvester and Air Jordan 4 R RM Pro Green. I've never heard of this model before this Nigel Sylvester colorway, but essentially from what it looks like, it looks like a hybrid of like a Jordan 4 and an Air Flight 89. It almost looks like that type of thing, but it looks way harder. Like this is fucking cool. So if you know Nigel Sylvester, pro BMX rider and um, Nike athlete, I think he's actually signed as an athlete under the Jordan brand for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I think they're trying to make Jordan brand like an all-encompassing lifestyle brand instead of just basketball, which is shit really. I'd much prefer Nigel Sylvester to be under a BMX kind of umbrella and have him be the marquee guy. Like, if they had, like, a BMX division, like, that'd be fucking sick. Like, you make BMX-specific shoes, but I guess they want to just add to the fucking... Inflate the sales and make Jordan brand look a little bit more better than it is than having a little kind of... Yeah, you know I mean, it's, it's a nonsense, really. He should have his own... It, it should be his own BMX division, and Nigel Sylvester should be leading it, because Nigel Sylvester is the most, you know... I think the most famous BMXer out there. I don't really follow BMX like that anyway, but he's the one that I know the most. He's most visible. Um, he's super cool. He's been with Nike for a long time. I think that would have been a good thing to have. But anyway, whatever. We got this shoe and it's fucking beautiful for me personally. You have the Jordan 4 lower um, part with the midsole and the, and the outsole here. You have the conventional Jordan 4 upper here, but then you have a little bit of a different sort of like upper bit around the middle where you have a lot of this kind of like plastic overlays. Some bits here, obviously, to increase the tension of the shoes. So you kind of wrap the lace around this plastic overlay. And then when you tighten it, it will obviously tighten and constrict the middle part here. So you can kind of wrap around your foot a little bit more. And it's more of a low than a mid. So, you know, Jordans, usually the tongue comes up just above your fucking ankles and the, the tab comes up just above your heel. So it's a bit more of a mid type of shape. But this particular Jordan 4 um, RM is a bit more of a low shape. So it kind of reminds me again, like I said, of like an 89, which is a, the, the Airflight 18 and it's kind of a mid, kind of a of a high. It's kind of like a quarter size. And this kind of feels a bit like it. It's kind of quarter, kind of low, but I also really like it. And I love the addition of the little swoosh here at the front. This swoosh at the front of the shoe is something that you used to see a lot on like Co.jp Nikes. So like Nikes that are made exclusively for the Japanese market would always have this little cool, um, you know, swoosh at the front. You also see... Sometimes a lot of like European exclusive Air Maxes that have the little swoosh in the front. The one I can think of the most the iconic one is the Nike Atmos Air Max One, the one with the elephant print on the front of it. If you guys remember that one, the one with the cement, yeah, those ones. So I remember actually, I've got a really fun story about these. In in an area I used to live in, I remember one shop weirdly had a pair of these. This particular Atmos Safari that they released in 2016, right? No, sorry, it released much older than that. That's a retro. Where's the OG? The OG model released much, much later than that. Much, much older than that. That's, that, that's not the OG. But anyway, there's an OG version of this particular shoe. Uh, of this particular Safari Atmos shoe. Let me do Safari. Maybe it'll come up. Um, the OG model that this barbershop near me was selling. But they didn't know what it was. And I remember walking past the barbershop. It came out originally in 2005. There we go. So it originally came out in 2005. I, I had this shoe and I remember buying it from the barbershop and unfortunately, the, the shoe that was in the front window was really dyed. So it was really um, sun damaged. So it's kind of yellowed up and shit. But I ended up flipping it and selling them, I think, if I remember at the time, for like a thousand pounds or something. They were randomly at some barbershop I used to live near. Like, and this was before, way before the fakes. The fake market wasn't what it was now. So they definitely weren't fake. They were 100% real. But if I'm not mistaken, they were like B samples as well. Because I think one foot was kind of defective. But I ended up selling them to somebody on Nike Talk for like a thousand or something crazy. And I used to remember, that was what bit I liked about them the most. Was this little swoosh here at the front of the shoe. So I love the fact that Nigel Sylvester's kind of taken that sort of like classic nike thing that is oh look at these by the way oh look at the shape on these where's that one with the with a cloudy bubble look at that you see what i mean about the shape of shoes i know this person's put like a little stuff in them but why can't nike remake shoes from the ground up to have this type of spec have this type of shape look at that look how flat that is look how big that bubble is like imagine these shoes in like a imagine this particular colorway in the big air window air max we have now they look so fucking hard like, oh, I fucking love them. Anyway, cool. Um, so I like that Nigel Sylvester has taken that kind of like classic Nike design with the Co.jp sort of like small swoosh at the front but at the front of the toe box and sort of applied it here to his Jordan. Um, and it's obviously in an olive green, new buck as well. Beautiful, great. I think it's a great color 
for like riding a lot because you're going to end up scuffing them and busting them up and water damage and shit and it's going to die out and it's going to be the plastic bits here are going to still be this nice pine green but the body's going to be kind of washed out so you get that kind of nice contrast going on as you're wearing them i fucking love it and as well as you can see here i'm not sure if you can see but i think in particular i don't know if this is true but i think they've done something to the toe box so even though the Nike Jordan 4 SBs, the toe box of the Jordan is a lot more thinner, a lot more flat than the normal Jordans, which is what they've applied to now the regular ones, like the reimagined ones, which I personally like, that's still a bit better. I think they've done the same thing with these because if you're riding BMX, depending if you're riding, you know, different, different, depending anyway, but usually the pedals are going to be kind of small. So it's kind of nice to have like a smaller kind of profile in the front of your toes so you kind of feel more contact with the with the with the pedals and if you do have cages on your pedals you can fit them in and out because regular jordan sometimes the the jordan's too big the toe box is too fucking fat and high to fit normally in regular cages which is why usually people like me that cycle a lot i ride like i ride fixed and stuff and whatever it may be like commuting around i usually like to wear vans I usually like to wear Vans. I usually like to wear like, you know, Converse's and shit. Just something with a more of a flat silhouette of a flat kind of peak so that I can get them in and out of my, sh of my, um, what you call it, of my pedal straps. Because I usually use like Velcro pedal straps to be like a little cool kid. So I really like the addition of those as well. Um, you've also got them, obviously, another picture there on the top and the green. I love the really low, le the really low tongue, by the way. It's not super high, easy to wear. I really fucking like the look of that. But a really nice shoe. Honestly, I've never heard of the RM before, but he fucking smashed them. They look really fucking good. And look at the back of the hill. That's a fucking nice touch. So on the back of the hill where you normally have the massive plastic wing, it's kind of been cut off and minimized. And it's also almost, it's almost like a web design here, but where you have Nike written on the swoosh, he has bike, bike air, which again makes no sense because it's a Jordan, but it's BMX, but then it's Nike air. So like, come on, just, just give him a fucking BMX brand instead of pushing him in Jordan. But anyway, regardless, I guess the Jordan thing is mostly because a lot of BMXers, uh, I'm assuming the Jordan thing is maybe because of his preference. He, he loves Jordans. And I'm also assuming within the BMX scene, people wear Jordans. Jordan 4s, Jordan 1s, 2, 3s, whatever. Um, but I would have still preferred him to be underneath that banner. But anyway, the actual article of it says, courtesy of um, Hypebeast, uh, what it says here, famed BMX rider Nigel Tavessa and Jordan Brown are set to shake things up with the Air Jordan R4 RM. Initially reported last month, the rumored Jordan RM um, collaboration is stated to arrive later this summer. The sneaker surfaced in the form of a leaked image that hit the internet as well as the tease video of the BMX rider himself. Now a new colorway has been revealed, showing the Air Jordan 4 RM arrive in a pro green hue. Surfacing online via Greg Yuna. Um, so we've got a pair available in fucking green. Um, let me actually see. There's actually a video of him actually where he's skating, making the fucking shoe look amazing. So let's see if I can actually get that on social media to, to show you. I think the video of it, of him actually skating in it looks fucking, sorry, actually riding in the pair of shoes makes them look that much special than what they actually are. Um, so really big up that aspect of it because that's a big part of selling these type of things. Oh, I don't know why it keeps doing that, but let's uh let's do it one more time let's go on this greg Una guys page and let's just get the post up and see if that works that way because i want to check out this video i think this video is absolutely hard and large large and hard so that's the greg Una guy he's got loads of i guess he does jewelry let's go down and check the fucking nigel sylvester post let's go to his account and i think we're going to have a video here uh that will be able to see him actually riding in the pair where is it? Oh, okay, there's him riding in the Travis Scotts. Where is it? I don't know. Um, maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe there's not one video there. Maybe it's a video I actually passed on that guy's page, but you don't actually see a video of him riding in there. But yeah, he's a cool dude, as you can see from his Instagram. All the cool guy things. So let's actually see the video from this Greg Una dude. Let's see what this is saying. Maybe we can get an idea on what the, the shoe looks like as he's skating in them. There we go. Yeah, see, there, there's him sitting down having a good time. But yeah, we don't need to watch the video. It is what it is. You, you get the gist. So um, the shoes look fucking sick. Now look at the other colorways. Look at the other colorways that are leaked too. There's this colorway too available, which is the black, light, and bone. And then finally, there's this colorway. Look at this one. In this oxidized green. So you've got this all white outsole, and then you have this green upper. Like two really good colorways and very different approaches to them as well. Like really fucking cool. 
So in this particular colorway, you've got um, a nice bl block of, I guess you'd say, I wouldn't say it's off-white. It's more like a really light cement color at the bottom here. You've got this really nice cement mud guard here as well um, in this new buck finish, which looks incredible, and an all-black upper, which is great. You've also got a difference in the eyelets and stuff. You've got re I think will look like reinforced eyelets. You've got this almost hemp design here on the top. And you've also got tubular laces. The ones that you're more familiar to see like a pair of SBs, which is a bit different to the one we saw previously. And you've also got this a bit, a bit more of a softer plush sort of like heel counter there going on, which makes them look really cool. And then in the other one, which is the oxidized green colorway, you've got the same sort of makeup. So I think it's a, this is the same sort of pack, but this is just with the green colorway here on the top. And then you've also got the same sort of plush lining here at the back. But they both look really fucking nice. Like, I'm a big fan of these. Like, really am. This is an actual good model. Hopefully, they make these in good quantities. So, they're available for everyone to purchase easily. But this is a really good, like, pro BMX shoe. So, I guess maybe the one that he has has the bike one. Because we don't have bike on here. This says Nike and the other one says bike. So, maybe that particular first colorway we saw is, like, an exclusive maybe that's the or maybe this is his signature model maybe that's the one maybe that this particular one is his yeah maybe this is his collaboration because what nike do really well is that when they reintroduce new shoes they usually introduce them under a collaboration unless the only retro i can think of that never really got that was maybe an air max light but usually big shoes, retros that they bring out, or even new models, they usually have to do it with a collaboration first. So they'll collaborate with a big person, influencer, an artist, designer, whatever, and then they'll put it out as a GR later on down the line. So a good example is a Matthew Williams. Matthew Williams did a pair of Air Force Ones recently. They had a very simple design at the front. Um, I think the Matthew Williams Air Force Ones, I think in low, I think it was an Air Force One low. Um, it had a really, it had like an interesting paneling design at the front. So I think that particular silhouette and shape will be a GR soon. I haven't seen them yet, but they launched them exclusively with Matthew Williams, um, you know, and then I guess that down the line, they'll definitely figure out a way to put it out as a GR, but to kind of call, you know, attention and get people to buy them, you sort of do them as a GR like this. So do them as an exclusive and then GR after. So as you can tell, this is like a regular Air Force One, but it's got an addition of like this Elix metal um, little tablet here, little um, hardware, sorry, where the eyelets are. But the really defining factor of it is the front. So the front, usually in Air Force One, you have like another panel here, but they've made it kind of kind of one piece, but not really, but you know, so it's kind of like an invisible, it's kind of one piece here on the midfoot, all the way to the front, and you've got the toe box. So in, you'll, you'll eventually see this shape or this style of an Air Force One soon. Because they've done it, you know, limited edition with uh, Matthew Williams first. And then everyone else is going to get it. As you can see here with this particular one, you've got the fucking Air Force One front panel thing missing. So most likely you'll see this particular Air Force One sans the Elix hardware be available as a GR somewhere down the line. So I'm assuming these particular models are the GR version. And then this green or this green olive one with the swoosh at the front and the fucking different tag as well on the back at the back is the Nigel Sylvester Pro Model exclusive sort of like one. But either way, the GRs or the exclusive ones, they're all fucking hard. Um, is there a date on these yet at the moment? I didn't think I saw a date. Um, what, weirdly enough, look at the price. Actually, I'm actually surprised. $150, that's actually quite good. I thought they were going to do them for like 200 something crazy, but 150 is really good to be fair. And they're meant to be released sometime in on July 3rd, allegedly. Allegedly, they're meant to be released in, on July 3rd. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting a pair myself. There's also a video here showing him skating around. You can check out if you want to see yourself. But yeah, the Nigel Sylvester and Jordans, um, or the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 4 RM, really nice. I wonder what the RM stands for. Not really too sure. But regardless, they look fucking hard. I love everything about them, and I can't wait for them to release and drop very, very, very soon.